Yes, hello folks, welcome to Beyond the Page on our YouTube channel, and I must say, delighted, and I really, really mean it's delighted to be joined here with the magnificent David Amiral. David and I go back a long, long way. For long-term sure listeners, for long-term listeners will remember Dave, of course, uh, as BTP um, family member, so it's always great to have him back. How you doing, brother? I'm doing great, man. It uh, feels great to see you the day after St. Patrick's Day, especially, yeah. <laughs> but awesome to see you, brother. As you said, we go way back, so yes. this is great. And it's meant 100% from my heart. It really is great to see it, Dave. And we'll talk about your podcast before we leave because I really want to talk about a couple of things on that that you need, folks need to check this out. First of all, you need to play Milan tonight, Dave. Yeah. Big, big game for both teams. Um, Milan, disappointing result of the weekend, lost to Napoli, which more or less I would say ended their title challenge. But this is probably the best Milan we've seen in a long, long time. In fact, purely coming in, it did so well, completely changed their whole trajectory of what they were planning to do. Is that still a wise choice, Dave? Absolutely. Well, look, you know, uh, it's pretty remarkable what's happened at Milan because this time last year we thought Ragnitz was going to come and yeah. re revolutionize Milan with the German way, but then Pioli did so well that they decided to hang on to him. You know, for Milan, it's a shame that the season isn't a calendar year because last yeah. year from January to December, they were the best team in Serie A. And this season with the new year, you know, the, the wheels started to fall off a little bit. So I think they still have to be very happy with Pioli. And look, they did lose to Napoli, uh, but I didn't expect them to beat Verona the weekend before, but more importantly, to perform the way they did at Old Trafford. I thought that was a great performance uh, mm -hmm. last week. And they did that with their reserves. You know, as you said, for Milan, this is a great sign. They, they didn't have before 11 good players and then to have also their reserves step up in a game like that. So I know the game against Napoli was bad, but I think overall things for Milan are looking good. Striking, striking similarities with United in many ways. If you United know, yeah. calendar year, be the same. Uh, but uh, Frank Cassie, first half, first game at Milan were, were the better team. Very unfortunate. No, they equalized yeah. eight, but for my money, they were the better team. Um, what should United expect tonight at the San Zero? Similar Milan, similar game, um, or will it, will their tactics change? What should, what should we expect? I think, you know, it's going to be pretty similar because they're going with Cassie and Meite, who are pretty similar defensive mids, and that's the lineup they had in the first game. Uh, so, yeah, and I think Cassie kind of shines, showing maybe more technique than people expected from him. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times we think these former Atalanta players like Cassie mm -hmm. are boss, and he's turned out to be really great, and he's improved a ton uh, this season. So let's see if he can have a repeat performance there uh, Milan you know that they have Chalanoglu now I think Ibra will play but more in the second half uh, so let's see that should even help having him a little bit uh, he's not going to start today as far as I know so yeah, but I think they'll have him a little bit in the second half well, one of the other big questions United fans have, of course, is the form of the Ojo Dallo. He's very, he was very popular with most United fans. United fans liked him. Um, uh, how has he been? Is, is, it, is, is it been a successful loan spell so far? I would say he's been okay. I'd say it's been very unfortunate for him. Like everything that could have gone wrong for him did. Like uh, he came in uh, and people thought he'd have a chance to play regularly, but Calabria did really well as the right back and he might start for Italy at the Euro. Not many. I certainly didn't expect Calabria to improve. So unfortunately he didn't play a ton when he did. He's been okay. But then I think the other thing that hurts him is Tomori, on the other hand, has been excellent. And I think Milan, you know, I think they will make the Champions League, but they won't be able to spend a ton. I don't think they'd be able to buy both. I think definitely their preference would be Tomori. He's been okay. My guess is Milan would try maybe to extend the loan. I don't think they would spend a lot to get him. Sure. So I don't know. Uh, but I think he's been okay. I don't think it's hurt his brand to go to Milan. Overall. No, definitely not. Um, if you had to make a prediction about tonight, Dave, what, what, what is your heart telling you? Mm, I don't know. <sighs> Milan really surprised me at Old Trafford, but that loss against Napoli was pretty tough. I genuinely think that if they weren't playing a prestigious team like Man United, they probably would have liked to get eliminated here to focus on finishing top mm. four. So I'm not just saying it because I'm you. I'm on your show, but I think me, I think Man United is going to go through. Well, uh, let me ask you about one or two other questions, really, Siri. You mentioned sure. there about uh, you've had this one of big questions. You, of course, after going out, is will Ronaldo stay? Well, he won't stay. Zidane said there may be some truth in whether he goes back to Real Madrid. I can't seem to spend that type of money. Will Ronaldo be a Juventus player next season? <laughs> 
So here's the thing. A lot of people ask, you know, should Juve keep Ronaldo or not? But I think that's just half the question. The other question right. is who would take Ronaldo, especially during COVID, right? right? And I think he's been good at Juve overall. He's scored a ton of goals. This season in the Champions League didn't work out. But the two years before, he was great, at least at his part. Uh, but, you know, he does cost a lot of money. COVID has really hurt Juve. Think about the fact you bring in Ronaldo counting on him bringing in all these extra revenues and you kind of lose that because of COVID. Like they couldn't have expected that, but even think about that. He still costs you a ton a year. So long and short, I'm not sure there's a huge market for him beyond probably going back to Real Madrid, but he's a proud guy. Think about what that would do to his legacy mm -hmm. or say. So I think Real Madrid would look pretty good, but Juve and Ronaldo would certainly not look good here. So I would say, 50 50 that he stays but i don't see like even i think psg you know they have neymar and mbappe if they add him i don't know if that makes a ton of sense do you could see him back at man united i don't yeah. I, I don't really see that so i don't know i still say 50 50 juve and going back to real madrid as the other possibility um is um is Pirlo's job under threat I'm going to say I still think it's slightly more likely than not he comes back next season. I think if Juve finishes in the finish second and it's not a huge gap from Inter, I think he's going to come back. Um, I just think financially, one of the reasons they hired him is he wasn't that expensive. They are trying to spin it out. We were trying to have this genius move. But it's also because he was cheap. I think I think they would need someone to hire Sarri, who is under contract for next season at a huge number. Then they could maybe think of replacing mm. Pirlo. But I think if they finish second, also for financial reasons, Pirlo comes back. Dave, uh, before we get the quick, quick questions about your podcast, any other big moves, ins and outs of Serie A you could see happen this summer? Um, I don't know. I could see. I, I think Pogba, you know, with Juve yeah. is going to be fascinating always. I think obviously they would have to move on from Ronaldo. I think if Juve can move on from Ronaldo's salary, then I think then Pogba makes a lot uh, more sense. I'm curious to see, you know, what happens with the ownership situation at Inter. What I will tell you is I don't expect, you know, clubs to say, oh, you can make payments on transfers. I'm going to take one of your players because I think if you set that precedent, then that starts for a lot of clubs. So I know there are people thinking, oh, if they can't pay, maybe we can get Hakimi. I think Inter will be somewhat okay. I think they are helped by the fact so many clubs are in rough shape. But look, you know, their ownership situation could go south and they certainly have a lot of uh, interesting players to say the least. So We'll see, but uh, and uh, we'll see what happens with Pogba. But I think Ronaldo leaving Juve would certainly make that a lot more likely for sure. Interesting. Tell me, uh, Dave, what's been going on with your podcast? How can people find it? Thank you so much, Phil. Yeah, so it's Culture Land Pod. We do uh, one a week on iTunes, all the platforms. We do one on Patreon. Uh, we're trying to do in depth things on Patreon with some really excellent guests, and uh, you know, we support an awesome charity with that so it's a great program it's a great community but even if you just enjoy the friday show uh you know we do set out previews talk a lot about transfers and i try to bring uh you know very good guests from italy to make it you know pretty authentic so check that out and uh, you might hear phil talking about marvin Hagler on an episode uh very soon absolutely uh, so check honored. that out <laughs> i can't wait for that absolutely honored any chance they have to speak about that man is an absolute privilege for me <laughs> Um, and uh, a guy from your part of the world, from Brockton, Mass, too. So, um, yeah, he is where a lot of great fighters are from Massachusetts, of course. Your Italiano brother, Rocky Marciano, was from that part of the world, Mickey Ward yeah. from that part of the world, some fantastic fighters. But, uh, so folks, check out this guy's podcast, one of the best in the business, well, well, well worth your time. And please try to support it on Patreon because. There's a cost to putting these things together, folks. And um, it, people don't see that cost, but trust me, it's real. So any help you can give us, it's always appreciated. Dave, always a pleasure. Thank you so much. And uh, Wonderful to, to see you, brother. Same Wonderful to, you, same to, to see you, brother. brother. Thanks, Dave. Awesome. See you.